Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I will start with the most uh, hard part of this presentation. Jem Privet. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Yay! <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Welcome to this uh, presentation. I'm uh, used not introducing myself because I think the, the presentation is, is more important than I am. But for this presentation, I have to tell you one thing, and that is that I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm 20 years in testing now, but currently I'm the test manager uh, for the acceptance test of the Dutch standardization organization. And I will give this example throughout the presentation. So uh, and for the rest, if you want to know more about me, please check my LinkedIn account. I was asked to talk slowly, so if, uh, but I could uh, uh, get very uh, uh, enthusiastic about my, 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 the subject where I will talk about. So if I'm going too fast, please do something like this, or then I try to slow down. Um, finding the best way to test your system. Um, in a sense, my talk is about getting better and better in testing and doing different things. And you can see people getting better or organizations getting better at what they do right on the spot. This morning, uh, Hilary, uh, the, the, the keynote speaker, he had this, these signs. Oh, Hilary is over there. <laughs> he had these signs from... Um, uh, um, holy uh, JavaScript to different sites. And well, that's, I think that's, that's a bug. Uh, is that right? And uh, this, uh, this afternoon I saw this. <laughs> and I was wondering, didn't they learn anything? But, um, uh, well, I can't reach it. Uh, I'm not allowed to leave this stage. It's, uh, I feel a bit tired here. Um, but that w word under there, it says lunch. So yes, they have learned, they have uh, seen a bug, they have uh, improved their process, and uh, I hope that this, uh, this talk will also help you to improve your, your, your testing. Um, my personal goal with this talk has got to do with uh, Peter the Great. You know Peter the Great, uh, we're in St. Petersburg. And yesterday I learned that he was highly uh, influenced, highly... Um, uh, motivated by uh, Dutch gardeners. I didn't know we had good Dutch gardeners and Dutch design and Dutch uh, uh, architecture and that they influenced him um, to, uh, to make Pietershof. I hope I will influence some of you and motivate some of you to change the way you test because uh, there are different ways of testing. So uh, maybe you could uh, go into Peter the Great's footsteps and be influenced, be motivated by a Dutchman. My opening statement for this talk starts with this lady. Her name is Linda Visser. You, you don't know her, it's, um, but uh, about 19 years, seven months and some days ago, she uh, gave me a course in testing. And she said, testing is done this way. You do this, you do that. These are test design techniques. These are phases. These are activities. That is testing. And that was testing at that time. And I applied what she said and was pretty successful with it. But now we are 19 years, seven months, and some days later. And by now, I, I changed my opinion. I think there's not one size that fits all. It's not that one way of testing, one method of testing, can, can help you to do all the testing, uh, can, can do the, uh, help you to do the best possible testing. Um, so, no, there's not, not one size that fits all. There are, uh, depending on the situation, depending on your project, depending on the organization where you work, depending on the system you are working on, you should apply different ways of testing. Now we'll present some different ways of testing. There are too many for, uh, for a 50-minute talk. 50 minute talk. Uh, but it will also try to make you think what way of testing would be the best in your situation. So the subjects are why different ways of testing, an overview over different ways of testing, and how to decide which way of testing fits your situation best. Oh, that went automatically, and that's fine. Our world is changing. Like I said 20 years ago, um, 
most of the, the system development was done in the same way. Most of the systems looked much like each other. Uh, we had something with front end, back end, but there was no, uh, no, not so much difference between projects and systems as we, have, we are seeing today. And if we look closer, we can see some continues between different values, between different aspects that are changing. Um, I think 10, 20 years ago, maybe shorter even, and this is the second time I'm in Russia, so I don't know how the situation in Russia is, but it used to be that planning and following the planning, really being close to, uh, be, being tied to, uh, to, uh, to your planning, was very important. And flexibility, by now, we're living in the age of Agile, and I'm hearing that a lot of organizations in Russia also use Agile. So flexibility is mastered much more. Yeah, that was in, in, in my way. Uh, Heisenberg has something strange with uh, uh, stages. Uh, I was in Heisenberg, Moscow, and had the biggest stage ever. I'm in Heisenberg, St. Petersburg, and I have the smallest stage I've ever had. Come on, I am used to walking around. It's, it's, but anyway, um, flexibility is, is appreciated in a lot of organizations much more. Our, our test methods we used uh, 10, 20 years ago, applicable for that? I doubt it. There's also this continuum between methods and craftsmanship. Uh, well, especially in the Netherlands, we have this one quite famous test method, and uh, it was appreciated very much. If you do this test method, everything will, will be okay. By now, we say now there are so many different situations. The person is more important than the, uh, the process. The uh, craftsmanship is more important compared to the method. Process focus. Yeah, I have a lot of sins, and one of these sins was writing these really thick uh, test process books, the test process of organization XIZ, 200 pages, templates with it, and you had to follow it. And uh, I did quality assurance on it. I forced people to follow it. I think that that's not how we work today. We should be more goal-oriented. We should be more focused on What's the goal of this project? What's the goal of this organization? Why is this organization, why is this project unique? And um, uh, then do whatever it takes to reach that goal. And of course, as testers, we, are, uh, we have in our, our genes to test thoroughly. Test everything. Yeah, but this could go wrong. I see a risk over here. Uh, maybe we should do it different. Well, a lot of organizations want to be fast now. They want to go as fast as possible to the market. Are there any, any faults, any defects in, in the, the, the application in the app? Some kind of faults, some kind of bugs are acceptable. Some kinds are, uh, so, some are not, I will talk about that later. Uh, but maybe we should try to uh, find methods that are faster. And some organizations uh, like to use standards. I told you at the start, I'm the test manager of the Dutch standardization organization. What they essentially do is uh, make standards and sell standards. You know, ISO standards, ASTM standards, uh, etc. So when I came there, this, uh, this IT uh, manager asked me, uh, we're a standardization organization, so we use as much standards as possible. And then I said to him, uh, then he asked me, is there maybe a standard for software testing? And I had to admit, there is. There is an ISO standard, 29119, and he asked me, could you uh, please apply that standard? And I said, well, it's possible, but let me make an impact analysis, what it means. And we found out, at the Dutch Standardization Organization, that we have to make a terrible amount of documentation, that we have to do very much uh, activities you actually don't need, and that we need to have different roles, different, uh, no, not, not different roles, different functions for people, which led to uh, that the, the test team would triple, maybe more than triple. So even the Dutch standardization organization, they said, let's be more pragmatic. 
Let's leave the standard for what it is. If you want to have a, if you're fond of making a lot of documentation, if you want to do a lot of unneeded activities, if you want to have a big team, please apply ISO 29119. Otherwise, don't do it. You can quote me on this. It's not pragmatic. And I think a lot of organizations like that. By the way, on the left corner, you can see this small uh, uh, picture of a, uh, not a phone, uh, a camera, thank you, yeah. Uh, some sheets are made part by part, and when it's complete, then uh, the picture is shown. So we see that our, our world is changing. Do you recognize these changes here in Russia? Yeah, <laughs> you seem to be happy about it if I hear it right. Yeah, okay, oh yeah. So maybe we should let go of the, well, the, the, the ways of testing we were taught for, we were taught 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and are even taught today and look for different ways of testing. If we look at testing, you could say there are two different streams or schools or of in, in, uh, in testing. Um, one is the more scripted ways of testing, uh, and the other one is more found on exploratory testing. The basics of scripted testing is that you divide testing in different phases, planning, uh, preparation, execution, closure, and um, that, that uh, you try to do all the activities, for instance, with preparation at the preparation phase, and after that you're you're done with all your test cases. Some people don't like test cases. I agree with that. Uh, and then you do your execution. As if you could divide it in time, you're ready now, and you go to the next phase. That's the basics of scripted testing. Exploratory testing is a different ball game. Suppose you would ask me to test your system. And I suppose it's not a back-end system with very detailed cal calculations, and it's in English. That's not a uh, small uh, uh, prerequisite. I only need one thing, and that's something like a test idea. What should the system do? What is one of the features of the system? And uh, you could call it a test idea, test point, and I just start testing. And what happens on the screen will, will, uh, uh, will tell me what to do next. And I will, uh, test this, uh, this test idea, this test point. And while I'm testing, I will see uh, other points where I can test. Hey, here's a, a screen. I'm not going there now, but I know it is there. So I write it down. And I write uh, the other one down. I finish my first test point. And when I got, uh, at the end, I've got, in this case, two new test points. At that moment in time, I ask myself, what's the most important test I could do right now? And I choose between these two test points. And uh, I choose the lower one in this case, and I start testing that one. And uh, then I find a new test point, and I make this, this, uh, uh, this thought again, what's the most important test I could do right now? That's the one on the uh, left in this case. So I'm building my test design while I'm testing. This is not unstructured testing. I can do more structured exploratory testing than some of you can do structured scripted testing. It's not a continuum between structured and non-structured. It's a continuum between do I think uh, up front and execute, or do I think and execute as if they are mutual uh, activities. And some some people are really found on, on, on scripted testing and, and they say exploratory testing is dangerous and some people say, ah, oh, scripted testing, that's, that's something from the past, you should do exploratory testing. I think they're both right and they're both wrong. I think both scripted testing and exploratory testing can be valuable, but depending on the situation, you choose, should choose uh, another way. And there's even more good news. There are ways of testing who are somewhere in between scripted and exploratory. What I just described, freestyle exploratory testing, doesn't need very much preparation. While, on the other hand, detail scripting takes a lot of preparation. But if you go somewhere in the middle, I put session-based testing somewhere in the middle, you could discuss that, but um, you do some preparation, 
but not, uh, but not very much. So there are different ways of testing. And I want you to look closely to these six different things that are ab above the line. And suppose there are, well, let's say minimum two things on this sheet that are new, new to you. In my humble opinion, you can improve your professionality. You can become a better tester. I was at a, at a project of a colleague of mine a couple of, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he was telling me about his his uh, his uh, uh, project and the system and the organization. And I thought, well, I think test tours is the best way to test this system for this organization for this situation. Test tours is the best. And he said to me, "What's test tours?" And I was ashamed. This is a colleague of mine working at the same organization. Suppose, suppose that. Your project is best tested with test tours. You've got no idea what it is. You do not deliver the world-class testing like Larry calls it. You do not deliver the best way of testing uh, that is around. So yes, I think a professional tester knows all these ways of testing, but also know when to apply which way of testing. Let's look deeper into it. Detailed testing and global scripting. Well, you've already seen this, uh, sorry, this picture. Uh, it's diff uh, I, I think I'm going to stand over here. It's better than I see this. Um, we divide all the testing activities into these different phases. And these, uh, the, the, the test methods who were popular uh, 10, 20 years ago and are still popular, by the way, all are based on this thought that you can divide all the activities in different phases. A detailed test script would look like something like this. Suppose we are testing an email, uh, email um, uh, agent, then a detailed script would look like this. Go to the home screen, press the button, enter to the field jkanagieter at squarist.nl, which is my email address if you want to reach me. Push on file, select the document, enter, etc., etc. Suppose that uh, uh, there's someone in the organization who knows something about email agents. You can give them this script. They, they sh uh, not necessarily ha should have made this script, but you could give it to them, and they can uh, uh, they can ex execute the script. So the one who makes the script could be someone else, and the one who executes it. The difference with global scripting is here you have the same script, global script, for the detail script. Make and send an email with an attachment to one recipient. Check whether the email and the attachment is delivered. Sorry. Um, you need to have knowledge of this email agent to understand what you have to have to do. But suppose that the tester is the, the, the one who is making the preparation is the same person as the person who's executing it, there's no reason why you should make your test script so detailed. So maybe if you're in that situation, you could reconsider, do I have to make, do I have to spend so much time to make such detailed scripts? Maybe global scripting will do. The second two, session-based testing and, uh, and bug hunts. Um, when exploratory testing became popular, um, both managers and testers had some difficulty with it because you just start without any planning, without saying up front what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. So from, for a, a lot of people, exploratory testing felt a bit like one big cloud. They're testing. They're testing hard. They're coming in the office at 7 and they're leaving at 9 and they're not there 2 hours but 14 hours. They got the sweat on their back so they're really working hard but we've got no idea what they're working on and what they did. And, and so we want to have more control over it. And then some brilliant people came with the idea of session-based testing. And we go from this big cloud to small clouds uh, with every cloud, every session has a, has a goal. Uh, and we have test ideas, uh, test points, things we want to test during this session. We have some documentation, not very much. Mm, half, a, half a sheet will, uh, will probably do. And uh, we see this smiling, smiling person 
Smiley. And uh, that's because the tester has got quite some freedom. And, well, it makes me happy when, when I'm a tester, when I have some, well, it makes me happy anyway, uh, freedom, but uh, also as a tester. I've done, uh, I've, I've uh, had these testing days where I had all these test scripts, detailed script, test scripts on the left side of my desk uh, at uh, seven o'clock. Well, I'm, I'm not that early, eight o'clock. Uh, and at the end of the day, they should be there. Those were not the most funny, great, uh, enthusiastic, energe energetic days. But if you say, you're gonna test this part of the system, this is the goal of your testing. I wanna have this information and I have some points, you shoot at least uh, a test. And you do whatever uh, you think that's, that's good. That gives much more energy, so the tester is more happy. So we have test sessions, we have test charters, something like documentation light. Uh, we make notes, and at the end we have a debrief. We, uh, 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 um, we tell our test manager what we found out, what the quality of the, the system is as far as we've seen it. And every now and then I use um, uh, things from, uh, from other people, then I put a source in it, so this is from John Bach. What are bug hunts? This is a bug hunt. I took this picture three weeks ago. Welcome, you're at the Dutch standardization organization. Probably you will not recognize anyone on this picture, <laughs> which is quite logical. Um, but on this picture, uh, I wanted to point them out, but uh, uh, I will not be able. You can see three professional testers. And, the, uh, and I took the picture myself and I consider myself a professional tester. And um, uh, the other ones are users. Um, the developer should have been there, but he was out for a moment or something, or maybe he was b a bit later, that happens. And during this bug hunt, uh, which is basically from 9.30 till 12 o'clock, or from uh, 2 o'clock till uh, 4.30, so two and a half hours, every couple has a, gets a goal, they get a, a charter, and we're going to hunt for bugs. I know the goal of testing is not to hunt for bugs, but it feels so good. <laughs> I know it's to gather information, blah, 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 but we go hunt for bugs. And everybody who, uh, who, who got the, the, the greatest bug, the most difficult to find bug, or the most expensive bug if you would not have found it, um, we will uh, uh, we give them a, a small gift like a chocolate or something. And today I got this Heisenbach mug, and the next uh, uh, bug hunt, the Heisenbach mug is the prize for the best bug. I will promise you that. Um, maybe I should, should try to get a second one. I want to have one myself. But anyway, a bug hunt is uh, uh, in 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 this way. There you you could, you could alter it. In, uh, in the way you want to alter it, but you can, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a session with the users, with developers, with testers, hunting for bugs. At the end, you still want to have this information, and it gives a lot of energy. And uh, if we compare session-based testing with bug hunts, the same is that you have sessions. Um, so a short period of time in which you test something, we make test charters, uh, there are testers in, uh, in both. Uh, you have a test manager who's organizing everything and the goal is to get info. At the same time, with bug hunts, the length of the session is much longer. Uh, if I do uh, session-based testing, after one and a half hours, uh, I'm getting difficulty with uh, my concentration. But a bug hunt, when we're sitting together after uh, behind one screen, uh, I can do three hours, no problem. You have more, more freedom than with uh, session-based testing. Um, you can do uh, pairing with others. You could do it in session-based testing as well, but you see it more often in bug hunts. And the, uh, the goal is not only to get info, but also to get acceptance from the users. I'm the acceptance test manager, so acceptance is very important for me. So we do bug hunts for a part of the system. The last two, exploratory testing. 
Um, I want to make one thing really clear. If you look at on the internet uh, for exploratory testing, some people say exploratory testing is a test technique. That is wrong. And it really is a method, it's a way of testing, it's a style of testing. You can test complete systems with exploratory testing. Other people say that exploratory testing is unstructured testing. Not true either. Uh, you use your test design techniques. At the end of, of, of uh, the, the, the exploratory testing project, you can have as much documentation as you want, you just don't make it up front. It depends on what the documentation you want. But. So it's a style of software testing that emphasizes the personal freedom and responsibility of the individual tester. With these old-fashioned ways of testing, you say we relied very much on uh, the, the, uh, on the method. Um, but with exploratory testing, you got a lot of freedom. But freedom doesn't come for free. It also gives you a lot of responsibility. You have to... Uh, you're responsible for what you do, so you better be very professional with it. You continually, uh, continually optimize the value of your work. So uh, you, uh, all the time you're trying to improve your work and make your work better. And like I told you, you're always thinking, what's the, best, the most important test? The test that gives me the most information or the test that will cover the biggest risk? You're always asking yourself that question. So you're not just doing whatever it says on the test script. No, you always keep thinking. And you're treating test-related learning, test design, test execution, and uh, test result implementation as mutually supportive activities. So you cannot really say, I'm doing test design right now, and now I start doing test execution. No, it's it's... It's in a mix like it's normal in your head. So uh, this moment you're doing your test design, and then you're doing, uh, then you're executing a test. Then you're thinking, well, what does this test tell me? Did I find a new uh, uh, risk, or did I maybe cover a risk and move somewhere else? And so, but now I'm interpreting. It's it's uh, you do the same things, but in a different way. Uh, well, the essence, I already explained it, so... Um, and uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, testers started to do exploratory testing when it was uh, first mentioned, and, uh, and I have to admit that it's difficult to, uh, to keep focused when you're doing exploratory testing. There is a chance that you could easily fall into unstructured testing, so maybe we need more grip on what we're actually testing and what we want to achieve. And then uh, a brilliant man, James Whitaker, came with an idea uh, about test tours. Exploratory testing without good guidance is like wandering around uh, a city looking for cool tourist attractions. It helps to have a guide and to understand something about your destination. It's from his book. And uh, who has been to Amsterdam here? Oh, not very much. Well, uh, a lot of tourists who come to Amsterdam, uh, they, uh, they know we've got a red light district and they go there. And, uh, but suppose you're a part of a family, you know, a father, a mother, two children, and you come to Amsterdam because it's got these beautiful buildings and architecture and everything, uh, but you do not prepare very well. And uh, I'm from Amsterdam, by the way, and you just walk out of the central station in Amsterdam, and you walk around, ah, oh, beautiful, there's a lot of traffic, and you see some beautiful canals a bit on the left after a five minute walk. <laughs> you know Amsterdam, eh? <laughs> uh, don't go there if you're there with your children, because you could end up uh, here. I hope you can see the picture, I think it's a brilliant picture, the, the mother, the father, and this little girl holding her bunny. Oh, where did I end up right now? Maybe this year should have prepared, and uh, if, if we're talking about um, uh, Amsterdam and you want to see uh, very nice architectural things, this could be a nice map. And um, I could not find a map without uh, the red line. That you should think that there's no red line. But if, if you're in Amsterdam for the architecture, you go to different places, you go look for different places than when you go to Amsterdam for the red light district. 
We got some brilliant musea. Um, I'm in St. Petersburg, you got the Hermitage. Okay, you win. <laughs> but still, we've got some brilliant musea. If you want to go to Amsterdam for a musea, you should have uh, spotted uh, different spots. So, that's the idea behind test tours. It gives you a focus, what you want to reach, what you want to do. And here are some examples in different words than in James Whitaker's book. I think this is more practical, my opinion. Um, when it comes to test tours, suppose you have a data-driven system. So you enter data, the data will be processed and data will leave the system. Uh, then you could maybe do the data tour. Uh, you know, create, read, update, delete. Suppose you have a system with detailed calculations. Then maybe it's better to do the calculation tour. Uh, some systems support a process, a working process. Maybe you should do the process tour in that case. When we are doing bug hunts at the Dutch standardization organization, uh, every, every couple, every pair has got one tour. Um, at the, the, the picture I, sh I, sh I showed you, I was sitting on the right, but I was taking the picture. Uh, I was doing the screen tour uh, together with this lady, and we really have a detailed eye for things on screens that are just out of line or strange or a different color. So that's where we are good at. So we all have different tours, we have different parts of the, the, the system, and we just go testing. Test tours, I think a brilliant concept. So, summarize it, you have got different ways of testing. Six, uh, there are more than six different ways, but uh, with a couple of colleagues of mine, we came to this, uh, these six that help us to, uh, to cover every situation. With scripted testing on one hand and exploratory testing on the other hand. I'm always making the same mistake when I'm doing this presentation. Everybody got the feeling that, I, that exploratory testing is better than scripted testing. That's not true. I like exploratory testing better than scripted testing. But scripted testing is as valuable as exploratory testing. It depends on the situation. But there is a difference in effectiveness and efficiency. I found three um, uh, investigations sources uh, that compare the, the, uh, uh, the eff efficiency, effectiveness of exploratory testing compared, compared to uh, script-based testing. The first one is in 2007. I think it's a brilliant way to uh, investigate it. They took two teams. They had two different um, applications, and team A was doing script-based testing on the first application, and team B was doing exploratory testing on the same application. Then they switched teams, and then team B was doing scripted testing on the second application, and team A was doing exploratory testing on the other application. To make sure that the, the people who were in the team didn't influence the outcome. And they found out that exploratory testing is higher. Uh, the defect detection efficiency of exploratory testing is higher compared to test case based testing. I should speed up a, a little bit. The second one, in 2014, about the same way of in, uh, investigating, they concluded that uh, exploratory testing was more efficient than test case based testing in our experiment. Exploratory testing was more efficient uh, when de uh, detection difficulty types of defects and severity levels were considered. Some people, I heard some people say, uh, this should be tested really good, let's make test scripts. Wrong answer. If you want to test it really good, use exploratory testing. I will show you later on that this can be doubted, but uh, that it depends on different things, actually. But exploratory testing seems to be more efficient. There's one, uh, there's one other source that's um, uh, in a book. It's a very thick book. I didn't read all of the book. But, uh, and the figures shown are for regression testing. I have to be very specific about this. Um, and a lot of organizations, they say, let's automate regression testing. Because uh, it's just testing, uh, it's just repeating tests that we already executed. Well, if the goal is to find defects with regression testing, I think you should do exploratory testing according to these figures. It, it's a strange thought, but, well, show, uh, the evidence shows it. 
The one thousand dollar or one thousand ruble, uh, well, a uh, hundred thousand ruble question <laughs> is uh, that you have to do, to be able to decide when to apply which way of testing. You can learn all everybody in this room. You can all learn these different ways of testing. But the really difficult question is when to apply which way of testing. Um, and uh, sometimes I get this terrible answer, and I hate this answer. It depends. <laughs> yeah? Uh, it, on what? On the situation. Yeah. <laughs> what does it depend on? So, uh, we order some pizza. We spend uh, an evening, uh, well, actually two or three evenings together with some colleagues. What does it depend on? What should you take into consideration? When to use with the, which way of testing? And we found these eight. I don't say this, this is complete or this is the whole story, but we couldn't think of any more really important things. And we came with system, uh, test goals, time, budget, organization, documentation, development method, and test skills. And uh, I do have 15 minutes. Uh, I can do the rest of the presentation interactive, which is more fun. Then we do the question in the discussion hall. Then there will be no time for questions. Or I can present it and we will have time for questions. Who likes to do it interactively? Who would like to do it presenting? Uh, okay, interactive. <laughs> That's clear. That's clear. Uh, by now, I've also shown that you can raise your hand. We, can, uh, we will do it um, uh, this way. I will show you different situations. And if you think that script-based testing is the best way, you raise your hand. And if you think exploratory testing is the best way, you stand up. <laughs> so if you sit down, you've got no idea. That, that's the, which, which could be fine. You know, it's maybe it's a situation where you've got no idea. So hands up for scripted testing and uh, stand up for exploratory testing. Suppose you have a system with very detailed calculations. Scripted testing? or exploratory testing? Oh, wow, yeah, that's, that's uh, um, Dutch standardization organization, we, we sell uh, uh, the documents, we sell, um, uh, how do you call them, uh, standards, and uh, this particular standard has to be 72 euros and 19 cents and nothing else than that, so we make scripts for that, yeah. Suppose you have a more user, Interface-oriented system, uh, like a website. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, anyone for scripted? No, no. Um, you have a more backend-oriented website. I would say, yeah, you, uh, it also depends on other things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, normally, you would say yes. Uh, backend oriented uh, would be uh, scripted testing, but uh, uh, the the answer on, on on specific tests will learn you what your next test could be. So a little bit of exploratory, maybe once a day reconsider your strategy would be a good idea. So mix it a little. Mobile app. <laughs> yeah, I would probably do. Mobile app with calculations. <laughs> you got no idea? <laughs> yeah, both. Definitely both, yeah. So it's not that you use or scripted testing or exploratory testing in your, in your project. Uh, at the Dutch standardization organization, it has to be 72 euros and 19 cents, so script. But we also have a web shop with, with a mobile app, so we do both. The checking part, checking whether uh, requirements or regulation is implemented well. Okay, yeah. Uh, Value-based testing, showing what the value of a system is. Let's see. Okay. I would say exploratory testing, but it's about 50-50. Uh, uh, is the, 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 the idea of value-based testing known here? Is it... Known term? I saw some people know. Okay. Uh, I'll come back next year. Uh, usability. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was too fast. Yeah, uh, business rule based. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, performance testing. 
uh, automated checking. That is scripted testing as far as it can go. Security testing. It's really funny. It's both, definitely. I've seen uh, a lot of uh, security testers uh, work, and they're really switching between scripted testing and exploratory testing. They're exploring, and then at once there comes a script, and then from somewhere from the internet or somewhere, somewhere from their hard disk, which is for security testers basically the same, but that's another story. And they start scripting, and then they start thinking, and they do some exploratory testing. They really switch. It was so fascinating to see. They didn't know the, the idea of difference between scripted and exploratory testing, but they do it so professionally. An organization found on planning and preparation. Yeah. Uh, this young, modern startup. <laughs> Don't make scripts there, please. They hate documentation. I hate documentation as well, so. More hierarchical, traditional organization. I think you've got the idea. So maybe in, oh yeah, well, when the self-management. So the responsibility is low in the organization. You as tester, are, is, are, you are responsible for testing. What would you choose? Everybody who's sitting is right. You've got no idea. <laughs> you've got total freedom to choose the way of testing. Uh, there yourself, and well, I would love to have that that uh, that kind of responsibility. I will wait for a minute. I see a lot of people taking pictures here, so and uh, let me check the timing. Oh, okay, we'll work. Um, when there's a lot of uh, documentation, what would you do? Scripting or exploratory testing? Sorry, I got you here. There's no reason that there is documentation to make scripts. It is possible to make scripts, but suppose it's a very good documented mobile app. Why should you make scripts? It is possible, but it doesn't mean you have to do it. So I think that if you got little documentation, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. Uh, if you got little documentation, you can always do exploratory testing. I only need the application to test. Then you can do exploratory testing all the time. But the fact that you have documentation doesn't mean that you have to do scripted testing. Uh, constantly changing documentation. What would you prefer? Oh, there are less people standing up, or uh, uh, I don't have any more pitfalls, uh, so <laughs> don't be scared. Now, uh, uh, if it's constantly changing, you have to change your test scripts all the time. And I hate changing test scripts. Let me test, please. So, exploratory testing. Uh, oh, sorry, w waterfall. Yeah, uh, I said I had no more pitfalls. This was one, uh, sorry. <laughs> Some people say that in Waterfall you can better use um, uh, scripted testing. But again, if you've got this front-end system, uh, a web application or something like that, why should you use scripts? In Agile, you do not have the time nor the money to make detailed scripts. If, you make, if, you, uh, if you're in Agile and you're working on detailed calculations, it might be different. But uh, what I see in Agile most of the times is that exploratory testing in Agile is a very good marriage. Um, but the fact that you're doing waterfall doesn't mean you have to do scripting. Suppose you have a lot of budget, unlimited budget. <laughs> but it would be nice, huh? <laughs> yeah. You can do both, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty convinced, I'm, no, pretty convinced, absolutely convinced that uh, a test case based testing, so uh, scripted testing, uh, costs more money than exploratory testing. I haven't found evidence for it, but it's, it's my own opinion. But the fact that you have a lot of budget doesn't tell you that you have to make scripts. But if you have got little budget, suppose you would come to me and would say, could you come here, uh, over here for, for a week and just test? Uh, I will just start testing and spend half a day on strategy and at the end spend half a day on uh, reporting and then just report what I did and what I found out and what my coverage is by then. But the fact that you have a lot of budget doesn't mean you have to do scripting. Suppose you're early involved. 
Yeah, I see a lot of people doubting. You can do both. The fact that you're early involved doesn't mean you have to make scripts. If you're late involved, you can do exploratory testing. Well, the same, uh, I think by now you got the idea, a lot of time available, little time available. Test skills, uh, suppose you're a really analytical, accurate tester. Which one would you prefer? Scripted testing? Yeah. I think a lot of testers who came into testing 20 years ago, 10 years ago, seven years ago, are very uh, analytical, accurate testers, and they like uh, scripted testing. At the organization where I work, uh, people from my age have a lot of difficulty uh, uh, embracing exploratory testing. It took me three years, no less, to really let go the need for making scripts up front. And the first time was, was uh, maybe I'll tell you later, but it was really scary. Uh, I think critical thinking is more important for exploratory testing. It's, you have to speed up after all again, but... Um, flexible exploratory testing. You need professional testers for exploratory testing. You can do, in some situations, five minutes, thank you. You can do a scripted testing with non-professional testers. I would not advise it to do it, but if people are smart enough have a, uh, and uh, are high in analytical thinking, uh, you could give them a course and they can make scripts. It will be limited. Uh, you will not reach the best result, but you could do it. So my conclusion, it depends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not done with you yet, by the way, but, uh, <laughs> but it depends on system, test goals, budget, documentation, organization, development methods, and test skills. This is really a skill you have to develop to become a world-class, a uh, 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 really professional tester. So... Uh, uh, I'm going to skip this one, I'm out of time. Uh, if I had more time, I would have asked one of you in the audience, maybe to, if you would have changed your way of testing. Come to the discussion zone uh, if you want to discuss you, your project and uh, maybe I could give you some advice. I want to end this presentation with, a, with an opinion and I think it's very, uh, uh, I think it's a, uh, very strong opinion. So just to make sure that language would not be a problem, I translated it with Google Translate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. It makes sense? <laughs> Could you repeat, uh, translate it back? No, it's, it's under there. <laughs> now, uh, Suppose uh, you're a tester, I think you should always invest in your professionality. Uh, Ilari also said it, always keep learning, keep uh, in investing in, in your own uh, professionality. And I think the future will be a combination of automated testing and exploratory testing. If you're really good in automated testing, maybe you should learn something about exploratory testing. If you're really good in exploratory testing, maybe you should learn something about automated testing. I think this is really an opinion, this is not a fact, that these two, automated testing and exploratory testing, are the future. Thank you very much. Uh, we got three minutes left. Yes, we have uh, just a minute for a small, small question. <laughs> Every hands up. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Arseni, and my question is, um, like, maybe some non-professional testers, uh, their non-professionality will be their benefit in exploratory testing because uh, they maybe will do something more like usual users, uh, not like uh, professional testers, because, you know, uh, some professionals, sometimes they look uh, from the from their professionality, and maybe sometimes it's not so useful. I've, I've, I have to agree here. 
So I should change change the picture. Well, the the the, the picture of the the bug hunt I did at the Dutch tenderization organization. We made a, a couples of uh, uh, testers and users, uh, and there's one couple of a, a system owner who's more IT uh, oriented with a user, uh, and uh, it gives us so much information. Just these two uh, working together. So. Yes, yeah, so you, you can use users, non-professional testers, for, for very specific test goals, very good. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, always be, be critical and keep thinking. You're right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I will be at the discussion yes. zone. Yes, other questions would be in the discussion room. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.